For our next speaker, we have uh, Quinn Yun um, and uh, communicating the robustness of the COVID-19 studies. And I will let her uh, take it away. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, today, I will talk about uh, work that has been an effort of a large group uh, as listed here. Um, uh, we are from different universities and different disciplines, including uh, social science, public policy, epidemiology, and public health. Um, briefly speaking, uh, we are working on providing an approach to help better communicate uh, the uncertainty or strength of evidence or uh, the robustness of uh, COVID-19 studies. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is forcing researchers and policymakers to accelerate the evaluation of treatments and vaccines. Um, given the urgency of the epidemic and the range of stakeholders involved, uh, we really need a shared interpretation of the robustness of scientific findings. It's becoming more and more important than ever. Um, our goal uh, is to provide such an approach uh, so that we can have an intuitive assessment of research findings uh, in terms that facilitate uh, public health policy decisions. Uh, why is this difficult? Uh, well, one challenge is that uh, unlike those uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions, uh, we actually don't know uh, what's going to really work here. Uh, there are a lot of research going on uh, utilizing uh, many different research designs, and particularly a lot of those research uh, are very small studies. Um, and interpreting the, the robustness of small studies uh, are not that straightforward. At the same time, uh, just as some dashboards are uh, that are collecting information and results from different studies. Uh, it is not enough uh, that these studies coming out, um, but also we need to synthesize all these studies uh, that are coming out and we need to make sense of them uh, in almost real time. Uh, so these are uh, two big challenges we are having right now. Uh, so our approach is that we think uh, inferences uh, from all sorts of studies are actually always imperfect and uncertain, uh, but we can always quantify the imperfection and uncertainty of your inference. Um, to do this, we ask uh, how large the bias needs to be to change your inference, or what would it take to change your inference? Uh, Dr. Ken Frank has been working on this for a very long time in uh, a lot of different contexts. Uh, together with the group, uh, approaches have been developed for continuous outcomes and have been expanded to other models, uh, including logistic regression uh, and mediation. Uh, and also we have built Shiny R app, uh, a bunch of different R functions, uh, as I will show you later. And also we have Stata functions. Uh, so all of this has been uh, already a, a pretty large effort, uh, but it's not necessarily related to, to COVID or medical trials. Uh, but when the COVID came out, uh, we engaged with some other people uh, who are epidemiologists or medical doctors. Um, we are also, uh, uh, who are also co-authors of this paper. Uh, and we thought we could actually apply the uh, approach to the emerging COVID medical trials, and that could be uh, useful. Um, uh, so I will start with an example, uh, which is a first randomized trial of HCQ. Uh, this is an early study conducted at uh, Renmin Hospital, uh, Wuhan, China. Um, 31 of 62 patients were randomly assigned to receive HCQ in addition to the standard treatment. Um, and the inference they drew from this study is that uh, HCQ is efficacious. Um, the basis of their inference can be uh, shown as uh, some two by two tables. Uh, they looked at several outcomes. Uh, one outcome is a reduction in pneumonia. Um, this is a two by two table for uh, this outcome. So we can see in this uh, table, um, uh, in the control group, uh, 17 out of uh, 31 patients improved, uh, while in the treatment group, that's um, uh, this row, 25 out of 31 patients improved. Uh, so it is 81% versus 55%. Uh, 
uh, and this is showing that the treatment has a significant positive effect. Um, but we want to say more about the strength of evidence here. Uh, we know uh, this is uh, statistically significant, but it is not a, a double-blinded uh, trial, and this is a very small study. Uh, can we better understand uh, the robustness of the finding here? To do that, uh, we start with a general approach uh, our team has been working on. Uh, we call it a case replacement framework. Say uh, you have a study where the estimated effect is six and you have a threshold of four. Then we can calculate that uh, one third, which is the black part, one third of the estimated effect of six exceeds the threshold of four. That means uh, one third of the estimated effect would have to be due to bias to change your inference. Um, importantly, we can think about this one third as one would need to replace one third of the observed cases uh, with zero effect cases to reduce the estimated effect of six below the threshold of four. So your inference would change. Uh, the key here lies on uh, the replacement of observed cases with zero effect cases. Um, this is why we call it a case replacement framework. So in this framework, uh, the more evidence you have or the less uncertainty the study has, the more observed cases need to be replaced with zero effect cases. For example, say your estimated effect is not six, but eight, then uh, you would need to replace 50% uh, of your uh, cases uh, to change your inference. And comparing uh, 50% to one third here, we know that study is more robust than this study. Note that uh, in this framework, uh, the threshold uh, can be uh, pretty flexible. So you can apply this framework to um, various thresholds. Uh, the threshold can be based on substantive importance, um, such as a minimal level of, of clinical importance, or it can be based on statistical significance. Uh, for example, in a lot of scenarios, uh, we are using uh, the effect size where the study is no longer significant at a 0.05 level. Uh, now we apply this framework to dichotomous outcomes. Uh, say we replace cases from our treatment survival category. So we know that uh, in two by two table, we have uh, four cells. Um, uh, we start with replacing cases from the one of the cell, which is a uh, treatment survival cat, uh, treat, treatment survived category. And we define the number of treatment success cases that would have to be replaced with zero effect cases to invalidate the inference as RIR, uh, meaning robustness of inference to replacement. And then we use this RIR to quantify the uncertainty of the inference. Um, let's go back to the HCQ example and use this approach to quantify uh, the robustness of inference that HCQ is efficacious. Uh, then in our thought experiment, uh, we replaced three cases from the improved HCQ group. So we replace three cases from this group with cases for whom HCQ has no effect. In other words, zero effect cases. Uh, but how can we know uh, which cell the three replacement cases would go? Uh, will they go to this cell or this cell? Uh, to answer this, uh, we looked at the entire sample. Um, under the null hypothesis, HCQ has no effect. And then 20 out of 62 cases which is around 32% cases experienced uh, exacerbated or unchanged rather than improved. Applying this, we will know that 32% of the three replacement cases, uh, which is approximately one case, would go to exacerbated or unchanged, and then the other two cases will stay here. So in the three replacement cases, one would go here and two would stay here. As a result, we would see uh, one fewer case um, in the improved HCQ group and one more, uh, uh, one more case in the exacerbated or unchanged group. Uh, from another perspective, we can also interpret, interpret this as one case switched from this group to this group. Um, the switching approach is actually uh, known as fragility in clinical epidemiology literature. Now, after the replacement or the switching, uh, the inference uh, changes. 
Uh, that is, HCQ is no longer efficacious anymore at the 5% level. Uh, now in the treatment group, uh, we have 24 out of 31 patients improved. And in the control group, 17 out of 31 patients improved. And the p-value increases to 0.06. In other words, to invalidate the inference, uh, you would need to replace three treatment success cases with now hypothesis cases, meaning RIR is equal to three. Um, this is equivalent to transferring or switching one case from treatment success from treatment success to treatment failure. Uh, as an extra note here, uh, for those who are familiar with uh, fragility, uh, Walter et al. in one recent paper has illustrated that uh, one switch can have very different meanings depending on how rare an outcome uh, could be. And here, the RIR framework uh, complements uh, fragility by accounting for the rare, uh, how rare an outcome could be, or what percentage of cases would experience failure or success. Uh, in this example, I'm using the entire sample to uh, estimate that, and one can also use the control group uh, to estimate that. Um, in this figure, uh, we extend the HCQ example by plotting RIR against corresponding estimated effect sizes along a continuum to represent a broader potential set of thresholds. Uh, each data point here represents the RR to reduce the estimated effect in the HCQ example below a particular effect size. Uh, so here we can see that consistent, our, uh, consistent with our previous discussion, one would have to replace three of the observed treatment improved cases with cases for which failure rate uh, equals to 32% to reduce the estimate effect of 0.26 difference uh, below the threshold of um, significance at 0.05 level. So it's from here to here. At the same time, this figure also shows that an RIR of about 16 to reduce the initial probability difference of 0.26 uh, to uh, 0.1. So from here to here, it will, um, we, we, we would need to replace 16 cases. These 16 replacements would generate five switches, um, meaning fragility equals to five. Uh, and more generally, this figure represents the RIR with, with respect to any effect size. Uh, including effect sizes that define a minimal important difference. Now, as a second example, um, as evidence from multiple RCTs accumulates, uh, adding the RIR to meta-analysis of RCTs can help assess and visualize the robustness of inferences beyond the reporting or examining p-values. Um, to illustrate, uh, we recreated the study-by-study -study accumulation of 16 estimated effects uh, presented in a meta-analysis of randomized trials examining the impact of antihypertensive uh, treatments. In this figure, uh, we present a series of robustness updates as each study was added in the uh, hypertensive meta-analysis, uh, where each subsequent point uh, presents an updated estimate effect and the corresponding RIR uh, was, is reported in each uh, box here. Critically, uh, the combined estimated treatment effect uh, fluctuated by several percentage points until the A study, uh, which was conducted in 1979. As studies progressed, um, the estimated treatment effect st stabilized and the number of replacement it would take to invalidate the inference um, increased substantially. Uh, continuous updates to an analogous figure using COVID-19 studies uh, would present decision makers with an up-to-date and intuitive characterization of combined estimates, as well as the robustness of the inference uh, drawn from scientific evidence. Uh, to make this approach more accessible, uh, we have made uh, several uh, functions in R to realize this. Um, because this is still a work in progress, so I would need to uh, install the development version um, as uh, uh, as a code here. Um, and then the, once the user installs the function and the library, it, uh, they can call the function named as tconfound. And the four most important arguments for the function is the uh, four cells in the two by two table. So the 14, 17, 6, uh, 25, 
are the four numbers we saw before in the HCQ two by two table. And the function will return um, uh, the user enter value that's our observed two by two table and it's a two by two table after replacement to change the conclusion. Also in the function, uh, the users can specify uh, the p values they want to uh, focus on or they want to use uh, for the threshold and whether they want to do the replacement or switch in the treatment row or in the control row, uh, what kind of tests they want to use, either a uh, chi-square or official exact test, uh, and whether they want to use uh, the entire sample or the control row to estimate how rare the outcome could be. Uh, we also provide another function called um, tconfound and then underscore fig. Um, and th the user can use this um, function to re reproduce figure that we have seen before uh, for the HCQ example. So in this figure, um, the RR is plotted against the corresponding estimated effect sizes along a continuum to represent a broader potential set of thresholds. Each data point represents the RRR to reduce the estimated effect below a particular effect size. And the arguments for uh, this function are exactly the same as the arguments uh, for the function before the tconfound function. Uh, in addition to the tconfound uh, in both our RShiny uh, and R package, uh, we also provide other functions to apply similar framework to conduct sensitivity analysis for a broader set of models, uh, including models for continuous outcomes uh, and logistic regressions for uh, dichotomous outcomes. Uh, I list the three uh, main functions here. Um, the first one is pconfound, uh, and the users can use this to conduct sensitivity analysis for published studies. Uh, so say you read a paper and you know the estimated effects, standard error, number of observations, and covariates, um, but you, you don't have access to the original data set, then you can use pconfound to conduct sensitivity analysis. Uh, you can use confound function to conduct analysis uh, if you fit models in R. So you have the original data. Uh, finally, you can use mconfound to conduct analysis for a meta-analysis. Um, uh, to summarize, uh, we introduce uh, a case replacement framework for sensitivity analysis uh, of clinical trials. Um, the framework supports statements such as uh, the inference would change if a certain number of the treatment patients who experienced a benefit were replaced by uh, patients for whom there was no effect of the treatment. The framework also uh, complements fragility by accounting for the rarity of negative outcomes. And also the framework can be used for any threshold, uh, including the minimally uh, important differ difference and a statistical significance. Also, the framework uh, applies to a broader uh, set of models and research designs. Uh, finally, back to our introduction, uh, we hope that uh, expressing uncertainty in terms of patient experiences make the robustness of inference clear, uh, even without deep knowledge of probability and statistics. Uh, we hope it could be uh, especially helpful for small studies as uh, interpreting the uh, robustness of small studies can be tricky. And we also hope that the RR can facilitate a common understanding among researchers, policymakers, journalists, uh, clinicians, and the public about the strengths of evidence for potential new interventions. Um, and this is uh, an ongoing work, and we really look forward to your comments, suggestions, and questions. Uh, and feel free to uh, send emails to any of us. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Lin. Um, I definitely wanted to join the, the the chat group with their comments of this was an excellent talk, and uh, thank you very much for your for your work and, um, and and sharing that today. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, let's see. Well, there there is actually there aren't any um, any questions posted. Right and. All right, so with that, um, we will go ahead and um, you know, close this session and, and uh, start the next. But uh, once again, thank you very much for uh, joining our, our conference and sharing.